we are replacing the battery in a Vantrue N1 Pro Mini Dash Cam. This camera will no longer hold the date and time due to a borked battery. This makes it difficult to find recordings and may cause issues if footage is needed for an accident. With the camera powered off, we will remove the SD card. The four Phillips screws holding on the outer casing will come out next. Most of the clips holding on the top are broken from prior disassembly, so the screws are the only thing holding it in place. Before this video, the camera was taken apart to find out what replacement battery is needed. The bottom will require some prying since the clips are still intact. With the top and bottom cover off, we can separate the two halves of the body with some more prying. Trying not to pry too deep, a tiny flathead screwdriver works pretty well, but it will leave some marks. Once opened, we are greeted by the zip connectors and ribbon cables for the LCD display and the camera. No little Lego connectors in this device. The LCD ribbon cable is shrouded in adhesive tape. A plastic pry tool to peel up the corner makes it easier to remove. If we remove more adhesive tape, we find the plastic connector for the LCD cable. Carefully flipping up the tab on the connector will free the ribbon cable. The LCD housing may separate unexpectedly here. Try not to pull on these ribbon cables too hard, since they are pretty thin and can tear like a piece of paper. We may as well put the LCD back in the housing before we get too deep. It is only held in with more plastic clips. Before removing the camera ribbon cable, remove four more Phillips screws holding the motherboard to the plastic housing. Be sure to keep these screws separate from the outer housing screws. This makes it easier to remove the camera ribbon cable as the board can just be lifted up and out. Under the motherboard, we are met with the wires for the speaker and the microphone as well as the battery. We will use a plastic pry tool, soaked in rubbing alcohol, to free the battery from the adhesive holding it in place. The speaker will probably come out with the battery as well. Once we can clearly identify the battery cables, we will remove them with a soldering iron starting with the negative side. The battery we are installing is taller since it has 200 milliamp hours instead of the original 130. The details will be in the description. When installing the new battery, start with the positive side. Sorry for the hand. After the positive side, we can move on to the negative. Now that we have the battery connected, we may as well maneuver the speaker back into its holder, as well as the microphone, so people can listen to some music or cursing when I show them a clip. Once the speaker and microphone are in place, the battery can be pressed into place as well. With the new battery in, the motherboard can also go back into place. Slide the cables into their connectors and close the plastic door to secure them. The LCD ribbon is more tricky since it has so many adhesive strips. Removing them makes it easier to see what you're doing. And don't forget to put this back. With the ribbon cables in place, it's time to screw the motherboard back into the housing. Since it is plastic, we won't be tightening them down too much. We may as well make sure the camera powers on before putting the final screws in. The new battery seems to be working, and it even has a decent charge, so it should be good to finish assembling. 
The top will generally snap into place. This one needs some extra support from those two Phillips screws since most of the clips are gone. The bottom does actually snap into place. Two more Phillips screws and this replacement is done. Beware of micro SD cards eating gloves. Aside from faint pry marks, this camera still looks brand new and the day will no longer be stuck in February 2018.